Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, I want to apologise for the shitty sound right now just because I can't find my little microphone anywhere and that's the only one that plugs into this camera. I just wanted to use my vlogging camera to film this video just so it was easy and I didn't have to worry about the kind of technical side of the video. Um, so, oh, I feel really nervous. Um, I just thought it was time that I kind of addressed my absence on YouTube and my kind of, um, what's the word? and my uh, kind of inconsistence on YouTube. Um, oh, I don't even know where to start. Um, but yeah, I thought it was time I addressed that. I feel like I owe you guys that. I've been saying that I will address it on my vlog channel. Um, and a lot of you guys have just noticed that I am kind of up and down. And yeah, I feel like I need to address this before I try and kind of film any normal videos for YouTube again. Um, I just want to address it and kind of put it to bed let you guys know what's going on and kind of move past it um so yeah I don't know where to start I guess I'll just begin with kind of where it all started um so you guys know I was in a very long relationship um had quite a private breakup and since then things have just been getting very weird feels like Mercury Mercury's been in retrograde for like I don't know, years. Um, I'm just gonna take a sip of my wine. I'm drinking some wine because I just didn't know how else I was gonna be able to film this video. So yeah, Mercury has been in retrograde for a while for me. Um, so yeah, after that point, after the breakup, um, which I was kind of processing and trying to get through, um, things started to get weird in the house. Um, I guess, <laughs> It's so difficult to explain what I'm doing, but I guess I'll start from the beginning, um, just to ex it's not even to explain, like, the beginning's not the worst part, but I want to start from the beginning to kind of explain the build-up, because it was kind of like a snowball effect, and now I've kind of, or at the point where I really stopped being consistent, I'd kind of reached the tip of the iceberg. Um, so it all started with the breakup, um, when I was living in South, I think it was like three years ago now. Um... Or two years ago, I don't know. And um, yeah, after that point, things in life generally just started getting weird. I was like, wow, is this what it's like to be 27, 28, 29, 26? Um, so, oh, God, I'm finding it really difficult to look at the camera even. Um, so, yeah, after that breakup, things got really, really weird in the house because basically, obviously, we, we lived with another couple and um, the boyfriend, the guy was best friends with my ex and um, things just started to get a little bit weird um, once my ex left the house, um, a little bit tense so you guys, if you look through my vlogs you can see I'm always either at a friend's house, that's David or um, I am staying at my mum's, I'm never living where I'm actually supposed to be living because it's just too uncomfortable in that household to go back and be on my own with another couple um that's all I want to say on that um but yeah obviously I was trying to find a flat I was still paying rent for where I was living and like I was just getting a little bit stressed um and then moving forward to when I moved to my next flat um that year uh first of all oh my god this is ridiculous there's so much um so first of all my um, my neighbour was actually my landlord and I don't think she was all there um, so that was a real struggle it was very difficult so basically what she'd done is she'd split uh, her whole house into like her flat and then two other flats and I was one of those other flats so we were basically living in the same building and um, I had like a little patio area and then after that point where you could see, if you look back in my vlogs, you can see out there's a garden and then there's a golf course behind it. Um, that was my neighbor's garden or my landlord's garden. And um, she didn't have a, a like day-to-day -day job. And obviously I don't either, which made things a little bit difficult, um, especially in the summer, which is basically when I was there because I was only there for six months before I had to get out. Um, <laughs> and yeah, it was just very difficult to film. Um, just being aware of the fact that she could hear me and see me through the um, the back doors because I had like glass window kind of panelled doors into the patio and then obviously the patio just went straight into her garden with no 
um, privacy so that was very difficult and um, because she was always at home she could see through she was always in the garden I don't really want to talk too much about that because maybe I'll save it for another video if you guys are actually interested in like finding out what happened um, there's a lot of tea <laughs> that I'm not sure I'm ready to spill but if you guys are interested let me know um, excuse my voice by the way it's hay fever um, so then that happened I was living in that kind of situation I was freaking out about money um, in terms of like a tax situation for like a whole year I was freaking out I was like oh my god I'm not gonna be able to pay my tax bill um, because obviously before that I'd had the breakup and I was like in that kind of phase where I was just like I don't care about anything I just want to have fun da, da, da. and I wasn't being a responsible adult let's put it that way um, and so yeah after realizing the conditions that I was living in with my neighbor um, my uncle then passed away in Jamaica and I did I didn't really do too much when I was there in terms of like social media but some of you guys might know I went to Jamaica and that is why because I went to my uncle's funeral um yeah and then after that one of David's closest friends passed away so it was like at this point it was like one thing after another after another and I was just like I just didn't know how I was going to survive so that feeling of like not caring and just wanting to have fun was um even more exaggerated because of all of the like things afterwards that just kept happening um so then you know near enough the six month mark of me living in that flat I was like dude I need to get out um I mean there was times where police were knocking at the door looking for people that weren't me of course let's just say it got it got it got to that point um so yeah uh I forgot what I was saying I'm so nervous I'm sorry guys um, so, let me, let me have another sip of wine. Um, so, right, so we were looking for a flat. Me and David decided we were going to move in together. We were looking for a flat and it was just impossible because we had a dog. Um, I think people are kind of, uh, chilling out a bit more about that kind of stuff now. And there's a lot of like new builds that are pet friendly, which I think is amazing. And I'm so happy for it especially considering we're thinking of moving because my dad's here which will be explained later um so yeah we were looking for a flat and it was just impossible so we really wanted to leave um the previous flat with the landlord neighbor because it was just becoming unbearable um and so we were looking everywhere for a flat and nowhere nowhere wanted to accept a dog um so we came to see this, we didn't say anything, and then because the landlord owns this whole building, we realised that actually we're going to have to say that we've got a pet if we want to try and put in an offer. Um, because if anybody else says something, then obviously we're screwed and we risk getting kicked out or whatever. So that was a whole struggle, we had to do a load of research like and a lot of convincing, get my landlord slash neighbour to write a um, convincing letter of like how Pierre's a good dog and... Da, 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 which was a nightmare as well um, and we had to offer to pay more rent we had to pay a bigger deposit um, but they finally accepted our offer um, so obviously we were super excited like so excited um, so we moved in it was amazing and then the next thing happens my grandma gets diagnosed with um, Alzheimer's dementia and I was just like, oh my God, like, is, are we, is this really happening? <laughs> is this what happens when you get older? So that happened and then, yeah, I just kind of struggled with that for a little bit. And then for Christmas, I believe, David surprised me with tickets for us to go to Paris to visit my grandparents because I'm half French, so they live in Paris. And so we went and I was trying to like vlog and be like super happy because I was having so much fun and David, we, me and him had never been to Paris together and I was just excited to like see all those things with him. But in the same breath, I was, we were staying at my grandparents. I was getting people tell me that that was wrong and like as a grown adult couple, we shouldn't be staying with my grandparents. Blah, 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 blah. But what I didn't mention was that I'd already found out that my grandma 
had been diagnosed and you know we were going through it and we stayed with them and I just wanted to spend some time with her and you know before she forgets everything because whew, because yeah it's just wild because my grandma's like she was the grandma that was like always really active and like she could still do the splits when she was like 70 and she had her head all there and then all of a sudden I'm faced or confronted with my grandma she's still my grandma but she's just a completely different person um and there's a lot of things that she doesn't remember and I just am thinking about when she's not going to remember who I am um and I know that there's also a life expectancy once somebody has been diagnosed with um that illness those illnesses so oh this is hard so that was um yeah that wasn't the best um and then in february i believe um and this will explain why my dad is living with us at the moment i don't know if you guys will all know just those of you that follow my vlog channel will probably know and some of the guys that follow my instagram may know um so in february oh my god why am i getting upset Ooh, okay, so in February, um, I get a phone call from my dad and I can hear like beeping in the background and he seems quite like subdued and, you know, I ask him what's going on because I knew, I already knew what, what it was but I just didn't, I was just waiting for him to be like, oh no, nothing, it's just like an alarm going off or something. But my dad was in hospital in Jamaica um, and, ooh, and he'd been diagnosed with um, an aortic dissection. Um, I'm not gonna tell you what it is exactly because I don't wanna like make any mistakes, but I'll give you like a brief summary. Um, an aortic dissection is basically just, well, I'm saying basically, it's not. there's nothing basic about it, it's very complicated. Um, basically he suffered a tear in the main aorta um, running from his heart Luckily he had type B, um, which is the aorta running down towards his legs rather than towards his brain. Um, but basically, they thought he was going to die. Um, he was in a ward with like old people that were just waiting to pass away. And um, yeah, they thought he was going to die. It was a very serious thing. And then from that point really was just trying to figure out what exactly was going on. Because the healthcare in Jamaica, the healthcare system is... Mm. I don't even want to get into it but let's just say it's not it's not what we have here and I want to just say now I'm so thankful and grateful for the NHS because I don't know what we would have done without um so yeah I we were just trying to figure out from that point if he can fly and how we're going to get him here and how quickly we can get him here so he can get adequate adequate treatment um I'm literally shaking. <laughs> um, so that was February till July. We were trying to figure out what the best plan of action was. And then we decided that he needs to be here to receive treatment and get better. Because obviously I've got two younger brothers who are just about to turn nine and 10 over in Jamaica. Um, so we've got that to consider as well. So I just said to my dad, like, you need to come, you need to come stay with us. like we'll get you, we'll get everything sorted out because paying for medical bills in Jamaica or the other option was Cuba was just, it wasn't an option. I can't, I, yeah, I do social media and stuff for a job, but I can't afford that kind of money. Um, so yeah, since that point, my dad's been staying with us um, and it's been almost a year now. Um, and obviously, oh my god, there's just so much with Corona going on. Um, he's a, you know, somebody that needs to stay at home for 12 weeks because he's at higher risk because he's got serious underlying health issues. Um, the aortic dissection was just the start. I'm just going to put this out there. I'm not going to say what else, but, um, you know, there were a few other quite serious illnesses that were discovered in my dad. So... We're also trying to deal with those things as well and some of them the best course of action is an operation but because of the aortic dissection he can't have the operation so yeah it's it's a lot <laughs> but um 
yeah with everything going on with corona now um he's not able to receive treatment he's had some treatments where he has to have um a type of injection but they've come to our house to do it instead of him having to go into like a hospital or somewhere that's like high risk um so that's amazing and again i applaud the nhs i'm so grateful for that if there's one thing in britain that i am grateful for it's the nhs so yeah we've just been kind of waiting around for that and it's been a year now and we still with the aortic dissection even though at the moment it's kind of stable so there's nothing there's no kind of course of action that we need to take um he still needs to get checked every six months because there's you know a lot of things involved that could mean that he suffers another one and if he suffers another one the reality of it is that he probably won't survive it so um we need to keep his blood pressure down we've got to look at his diet um make sure he's not kind of exerting himself too much um and yeah it's been a lot but it's also been amazing and it's like taught me a lot about myself and like my dad's been in jamaica for 10 years i believe so um it's super weird but like really nice to have the experience of kind of living with him and um just spending like a lot more time with him aside from like facetime or a phone call um because we did stay in touch uh very regularly actually but it's just not the same so that's been amazing um but the difficulty has been just trying to figure out what's going to happen next is he going to stay in the uk are my brothers going to come here how are they going to be taken care of um you know there's a lot of complications so you know how we need to figure out how my dad's going to get a flat and stuff like that so yeah that's kind of been what's going on in my mind and then obviously corona happened and then uh george floyd's murder which really hit me actually very hard um which was very unexpected i didn't really I mean obviously like I'd be upset but I just didn't expect it to hit me in the way that it did um yeah and <laughs> oh my god this seems like so much but basically during this whole time as well um <clears throat> from when I from when we moved to south like just before from when we moved the two couples into that house in south London just before that I started experiencing like weird stuff with my period and um I was getting like ridiculous period pains when I'd never suffered period pains in my life. I was feeling, this might be TMI but I'm going to say it, I was feeling really constipated. There was, I remember there was one time where literally I went to the toilet about three or four times, nothing could happen and then I just sat there and I was so shake, like trembly and sweaty from the like, I don't know, intenseness of it that I had to take all of my clothes off and I literally sat there for like two hours and still nothing happened. <laughs> this is embarrassing. Um, but that was like the intensity of it. So I was like weak, like trembling. Um, the anxiety was getting really bad. And I um, basically, well, I was explaining it in my vlogs actually. And some of you guys suggested that it might be PMDD, which is P, uh, not P, which is premenstrual dysphoric disorder. And I looked into it more and I literally related to every single kind of symptom and I was like wow this can't be a coincidence like let me go and find out a bit more about this um, and I did and I was like okay let me try fix up my diet a little bit like eat the right food so the pain isn't so bad so the um, emotions aren't so bad you know um, I was getting extreme hunger like I was getting uh, what's it called you know when your brain goes dead like like baby brain um, brain fog to another level like if you'd asked me my name I probably wouldn't have been able to tell you my name um you probably think I was like high on something um and it was just getting to the point where it was just so bad like this last well just bef well in 2019 yeah it just started to get really bad um and it was affecting my work because I my anxiety was so bad um it was affecting my my relationships my friendships um <clears throat> I you know I was struggling to sleep but then in the daytime I was tired all the time and I hate to admit this but I was having like like really dark thoughts um and this this was a hundred thousand percent the worst it's ever been and at this point I was like I need to get some help 
I've kind of thought about it, you know, like pondered on it before, but I was like, no, like, I don't want to take meds, you get addicted to them, like, I don't need this, I want to fight this by myself, and that's all good and dandy until you get to the point where I was at, and I was just like, I need help, because I can't even bring myself to do the things I need to do to help myself, like, I didn't even want to get out of bed some days. Um, so I went to the doctor, and they agreed I was, um, P I had PMDD, and maybe a bit of, like, anxiety disorder and depression um probably related to the pmdd um because that's really after that point where i started getting the pmdd symptoms is when the rest of it um kind of intensified and got worse um so yeah i went to the doctor and they prescribed me on some anti-anxiety anti <laughs> some anti-anxiety <clears throat> Um, some anti-anxiety slash anti-depression tablets, they're called SSIs, which is, they're basically serotonin release inhibitors or something like that, so they basically hold, like, block your serotonin from leaving, I don't know, I'm bad at explaining stuff, um, and yeah, at first, basically, oh, I don't even know how to explain, I was really scared because, um, with that, there's a high risk of feeling a lot worse before you get better on those and I was like oh my god I don't know if I can handle feeling worse than I feel like I didn't think I could get any lower at that point um but I took them I was like dude if this is gonna work I have to try I tried um the first few nights I couldn't sleep I could not sleep till about five in the morning and I don't know whether that was just like uh not anxiousness but like excitement of the fact that I had kind of taken charge and taken action to try and fix things or if it was actually just the medication but a few months down the line I I still suffer with anxiety but it's not crippling to the point where I can't answer messages I can't do my work because I'm so nervous I can't um talk to my friends can't go outside like can't get out of bed can't get to sleep um yeah, the, the, those those problems are definitely lessened and I'm so grateful for it. I feel a lot more kind of level-headed and calm, a little bit more kind of sure of who I am. Um, and they've definitely helped to reduce my anxiety. I'm not saying it's completely gone, but I feel a little bit better and I feel like there is light at the end of the tunnel and there's a way out. So it's amazing to feel like this after about I think three years of just feeling like helpless um yeah and I know this is this is a silly one but the other the, one of the other reasons I haven't really been wanting to film is because obviously I got filler I got cheek and jaw filler and I guess at the time I was like yeah this is a cool idea da -da -da, let me try it and now I'm just like oh I just want to get rid of it all I don't care um and yeah so I was kind of embarrassed of my face I did get a few comments saying I look different and that my face is really big now and like too harsh and listen I agree okay <laughs> I agree so that was just making me so nervous to get on camera as well and I just felt like I needed to address everything with you guys before I could come back and just be myself again um because you guys are like family you are my friends you are my family and it just feels weird to hold things from you and for you guys to see that I'm just kind of um MIA and then I'm back for a minute and I'm like yeah I'm back for good and then I'm not so I just thought it was time to like sit down and like briefly vaguely explain everything um and yeah that that is it so oh, I don't even know what I've said I do want to say as well that like I'm not looking for pity in this video. I waited till I had processed everything because I was not about to try and cry on camera. Um, and you know, I just, I don't want pity. I just want you guys to understand that I'm human as well. And that, you know, as amazing as somebody's life might look and I blame myself for that because I only ever want to show the best parts of my life. And I feel like it's a lot better to share all of your experiences with people so that you can all relate to each other and start an open conversation. Um, I just thought 
yeah, I just need to share it with you guys. Um, so I hope you guys can understand that. I'm really not looking for pity. I don't want, um, you know, pity. Um, I just want you guys to understand where I'm at and why the things are the way that they've been, the why things have been how they've been. Um, and just understand that I am a normal person as well and we go through stuff. Um, yeah, a lot of stuff. I'm sure there's stuff I've missed out as well. But, you know, I had to get this video filmed. I thought, let, let me have a couple of glasses of wine, sit down, have a chat, and then we move. Um, thank you guys so much for listening and watching this video if you've got this far. Um, I definitely want to try and make this the change where I am actually a little bit more open and honest with you guys about how I'm feeling and things that are going on in my life. Um, it definitely has been therapeutic for me to actually sit down and talk about it. And I hope that maybe it can help some of you guys. If, if any of you are going through the same thing or similar situations, I just want to start like an open conversation where we can all, um, you know, speak freely and openly and offer each other advice. Because um, we are the Green Gang, the Green Family. That is your name, guys. I've come up with a name for you guys. And I just want everyone to feel included and understood. So, yeah. I... Yeah, I, don't, I was going to say I hope you guys enjoyed. I don't know if this is enjoyable, but um, thank you guys so much for watching. I love you all. I feel like a huge weight has been lifted off my shoulders and I'm excited to feel inspired again. I've been feeling inspired, but I just feel like I can't project that onto you guys until I have an explanation. So, yeah, I love you guys so much and I will see you guys all in my next video. Until next time. Bye. Mwah.